What's going on, everybody? It is the weekend, and I hate to say this, but UPS did not show up yesterday with uh, my package, which contained the giveaway box, along with my Pokemon, Prism Football, Optic Football. It was a long night because uh, they rescheduled for delivery, confirmed it with me, then they passed the first window I called, passed the second window, then it went to 9 p.m., and I called again, and they're like, no, sir, if they were coming back, they would have been back by now. You're going to get delivery tonight. And I'm like, all right, well, I'll throw the porch lights on. You know, I don't want to leave that box out overnight. Probably about an hour, hour and a half later, yep, rescheduled delivery for Monday. So I do apologize, everybody. Um... Yeah, just one of those things. I got out emails out already for everybody who wanted the Pokemon. And I didn't want to do a video real late last night. So I figured I'd get up today and then get this video linked in with uh, saying, sorry about the giveaway. I'm waiting. And they keep blaming the weather, which is kind of weird because the last two and a half, three days, roads were fine to where they could have came. So I have no idea. What's going on with it all? Um, if I call my distributor on Monday, I'm going to let him know as well, too. Maybe they could put some fire in UPS because I got it that, like, right now, PSA, FedEx, and UPS don't want to do any pickups from them. So they're keeping everything the safe. So if you have stuff that's been great the past few days, it's just not going to come out uh, until they get their pickups done. But I guess we'll see what we can do. We can only play it day by day. I apologize, everybody. I promise it's a nice box. As soon as it comes in, I'll get that video out. Um, it, it, it even pushed me doing PSA this weekend, so now I gotta try to knock it all out either Monday or Tuesday night to try to get everything out before the end of the month. But let's go into a little bit of uh, different videos for a change here. Um, I've been brainstorming some different stuff, so see how well it goes. All right, we're going to start off with today's, and it's basically five big mistakes I've made over the years with card collecting, and I wanted to share because it's more, some of it's lesson learned, and I know that kind of sounds military-ish in a way. It's probably because being 20 years in, you kind of talk like it all the time, but I figured if I could share these, I mean, some people might know them, some might not, you know, some people you know, might be able to use this. I, I don't, I'm not too sure, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. And if you guys have anything you've learned over the years, put them in the comments because a lot of people are reading through the comments and getting information, just not from the video, but from also from everybody that's commenting in the comments too, which is good because we're all sharing. And it doesn't matter if you've been doing this for 30 years, 5 years, and then coming back in, or you just started, or you're trying to get your kids into it. There's a lot going on in the hobby, and trying to keep everything up to date, it, it can be really time-consuming and frustrating at times. And actually, I think about this, this should be 6 big mistakes I made. So I'm going to touch once not on the slides coming up, or on the screen. Let's <laughs> see, I use PowerPoint. And the first thing that really hurt me the most was that I couldn't separate myself from a collector. And I don't want to say flipper, but being more into, you know, the resale of the product itself. So everything that I was getting in at one time, I, mean, I was like, oh, this is the coolest thing. I want to keep it. And what it did, it built up for over so long to where I either lost money on the stuff because it was so new of a product. And I... And I'll get into this more with some other stuff, but I couldn't, you know, pretty much figure out which where I was at. Was I just going to be a pure collector? Was I just going to do this as a business? And I think it took me about three years to really be able to separate the two. And what it really took was me to take all my PC items and move them to safety deposit boxes, minus the binders and stuff. But... That way I didn't see the stuff anymore, and the stuff that I was keeping behind me was either what I called long-term or short-term holds. And what I would do is I would use that stuff, get my money back, use profits to buy PC stuff. So it, it took a while, but if you can't separate yourself between the two, it can get very, very expensive. All right, now I promise we're going to move into the first slide. 
If it'll flip, there we go. All right. And th this is kind of recent, too. Buying into random team breaks and buying too much into breaks at current market price. So back in the day, like five years ago, I didn't mind buying into breaks. We were doing freaking box wars for the full case and stuff. But it was cheap. Very cheap. Very affordable. Uh, and I'm one of the people that do a lot of spreadsheets on this stuff and graphs to see where, you know, where is my money being spent at? How well am I doing on to it? One of the biggest things is I was getting into random team breaks a lot because I was like, oh man, for, you know, 80 bucks, I could hit this team here. And it's like, you know, a 10th of the price. Pretty cool. Well, I would probably say roughly I was hitting a good team one in every four or five random team spots I would buy. And that's just rough. So when I looked at the money into it, you know, I wasn't getting a top team or mid team. I was getting a lot more of the low tier teams. And yes, of course, the low tier team, you can hit a low number card, get your money back and all that. I got it. But it was costing me too much money. So I pretty much scrapped this year really getting in random team breaks. Unless it's a super high-end product like Flawless, NT, iMac, maybe Prism, or Optic. Those are where I would probably do random teams at because I have a better chance at hitting a bigger or mid-tier team and making money than I would backwards. So that's one thing that I've really tweaked a lot more this year. The other thing is buying too much into breaks at current market price. A lot of times you'll see people grabbing four or five teams in there and they're prospecting or hunting for the rookies. What I've learned is to stick with what I know. And at first, you never know how that rookie is going to be. So I will go after usually the top two or three people and then I'll tweak it as the season goes to where if I can't get like maybe one out of two or three teams that I'm going after, I skip the break now completely. And that's just me because it's a huge gamble. And with the current market prices out there, you know, trying to get the cards, it, and they're becoming like, if you look, there's cases of Optic this year nobody produced a Herbert Ray and Rookie in. Imagine if you bought them. You know, you just lost a ton of money. Before, you used to be able to get into, like, say, back in 1819 buying, like, the Mavs. You get a bunch of Luca base, you grade it, and you'd hopefully either break even. Now you'd probably either break even or make profit depending on the grades. So you always have to retool what you're doing, and it's luckily because I break my stuff down each year as I do my taxes, and I can see where am I losing the most money at. And, and that was one of the biggest lessons learned from this past year. And I think that's probably going to be the really only more recent one on to here, too. All right, let me get the next one here. And yes, the background is burning down because if I would have kept on this path, and I did have some help of people pointing this stuff out to me too, which was really good. I mean, I had some hard love, hard love given to me, like, dude, you need to look what you're doing because it's you're you're gonna hurt yourself in the long run. And a lot of it was on me too, to where I figured it out. But I was being lazy with grading. Uh, probably about three years ago is where it really comes into play, where I was being lazy. And I was only doing Beckett, and I should have been doing more PSA and holding this stuff because it was cheap to do that with uh, the regular rookie cards. And there were times I'd put stuff off, and what I changed within the last uh, probably about 12 to 18 months is I set a thing up where I am getting an order out per month. No matter what, I'm doing an order per month because I need that influx of cards to come back in to recomp what I've been spending out there. And hopefully get, you know, 60% roughly back in PSA 10s so that I can make profit and, you know, get my money back and then put some aside for, you know, whatever I need to do. More grading purposes or buying PC or even long-term investment holds. So that, that was one of my things because I always said, oh, I need to do grading. I need to do grading. I just keep putting it off. And I call it being lazy. And since I'm critiquing myself, I can call myself lazy with it for a while to where I was not sending enough out to be in grading, and that started hurting up and piling up completely. Like, right now I'm looking, you know, probably about 50 cards I need to send in for myself just uh, end of the month for, uh, was it Value Ultra Modern, and I got a few that I need to send out for uh, regular service. But I have it all on hold because of the UPS right now, so it'll be some long nights before end of the month. 
I do apologize if it's turning a little bit longer of a video, too. I just happen to see the time it's been recording. All right, my next one, number three, not doing enough research. And this is probably about two, three years ago to where I was not really researching enough on products. And it'll go into another, the very last point on to here, too. So I'm going to try to skip part of it here. Where I just didn't do enough research on product, players, and I still really don't when it comes to prospect in baseball. My thing with Bowman is that I'll sell it all re unless I hit an autograph that's, you know, numbered. Then, it's, then it comes into play, I'll hold it. Because those are very long-term investments because a lot of times you don't see them Bowman cards really peak until like two or three, four years when that guy comes up and he does well. Or they're hoping he does well. So my big thing was I was really uh, behind on basketball starting in 17-18. So when Luca's season came out in 18-19, I did a lot of research. And I did put a lot of money into Luca, which paid off. Um, I had a little bit in Trey Young, but I started uh, falling back into an old trap of wanting to get every rookie out there. Marvin Bagley and uh, you start hearing people saying Shemette and this person. And so I had to pull myself back in, had to get the old fishing pull out, reel myself back in, and be like, hey, what are you doing, guy? Get back on track, stay on focus, because then you start spending too much money on these uh, long shots. And, you know, that, that was me. That was me, because I have goals I set each year that are both short and long term, and I need to hit them and not stray from them as much as I did. And there's a lot of ways you can do research, too. You know, you're looking at, you know, the players, the teams, but you're also going to start looking at the products, price value. You know, is this considered a low, mid, high, super high tier uh, product? What's the resale value is going to be at? Then you start looking at sales. So there, there's a lot that goes into research. I do a lot of it, and I do a lot of listening, too, uh, for some videos of people now that, you know, they share the same thought process as I do in cards. Because I figured if I started listening to everybody, I'd fall into a trap again. So I listen to people that are like-minded like me. And because we both make sense with what I'm saying and what they're saying. So research. Always do your research. Next one. This, this was a while back, too. Scared and nervous to make the deal. Basically pull the trigger onto it. I can't tell you how many times I should have told myself, I just tell, like, I need to buy them in this break. They haven't hit in like three cases. And I didn't do it. And something huge would come out. Or I was like, oh, man, this guy's going to be going up. I should buy some of his cards. And I didn't do it. Because whether you call it scared or nervous, scared is what I called myself. Nervous is probably the polite way of saying it to myself. But either way, I couldn't, you know, pull the trigger and complete the deal on this stuff. And in today's market, that's where you have to separate yourself. That's where I had a hard time, too, because of looking at a collector. And I'm just calling a straight-out flipper type person onto it or, you know, business side of the house if you want to get politically correct onto it. So that's where a lot of my stuff all focused in at. And I had to start learning, you know, trust my gut instinct. I did the research. Do it. Just do it. The odds are in my favor. And if it doesn't pan out, you're going to take losses, but you should have enough to where your profits outgain your losses by doing enough research and trusting and believing in yourself. That's the key. Trusting and believing in yourself and what you've talked yourself into. I don't know if people say gut feelings, you know, whatever it is, but that that was the biggest thing. Because I could tell you I was thinking about rebuying back into Trouts. I should have. Uh, let me think here. Julio Rodriguez, another one I should have kept and bought heavily into. Uh, hockey, I should have bought way more into Sidney Crosby than I did. Uh, Jordans, I should have graded a lot more and bought more when I had the chance back in the day. And I didn't do all that stuff because I was scared and nervous and I wanted to get into the next big thing. And again, that's where I had to pull myself back into stuff and I do it occasionally like whoa you're losing track on what you're doing so hopefully some of this stuff makes sense to everybody here the last one's really really key and it's nobody in particular that I'm talking about but I'll go into it here give me a second pull it up 
All right, listening to others. And everybody out there is going to have an opinion on it, whether they heard it from somebody that I think is, and this is my opinion, is giving out bad information, bad judgment, bad whatever. If you start listening to every single person out there, you're going to notice that people start talking differently and everybody has different focuses. And there's a lot of bad information going on out there. No lie. And, uh, you know, I hear a lot of it daily. And I'm like, I would be scared to say something, you know, in the terms that, oh, what's one of the lower grade companies? GMA, okay? GMA 10s are worth PSA 9 level. Ooh, that's not a good thing to tell people because maybe on a low base card, but let's go pull up the stuff when we start hitting big cards. There's a big difference in there. So to me, I stick with what I know. I mean, I could have used HGA, but their stuff's all over the place being new right now. And I was trying to think of somebody that's been around for a while. But if you start listening to others on who they're trying to prospect and go after, and they have don't have a good proven track record, and, and even if they do have a good proven track record, they could be, you know, wrong. It's just as simple as that there. That's why I don't share my picks. I'll show you what I buy into occasionally, but I say don't always listen to me because even though I've done well to where my profits outgain my losses each year, I have to really stay on task and focus with it. But if somebody would take one of my losses onto it, I would feel bad overall onto it. So I always say use your own judgment. And same with listening to others because everybody's going to be going every which way out there. You'll hear, you know, even like Gary Vee might say, go by, I don't know, uh, Nick Senzel this year. Or, you know, with... Uh, Vegas Dave telling you Derek Carr, Derek Carr. Yeah, it might have been true years ago in current prices. He did make a profit, but, you know, it's how you view it and everything. So my biggest, you know, thing is listening to others. I, I'll listen to it, but I'm not going to use what they're saying. I'm going to do my own research, time, and everything onto it. Unless it's a really a select inner core of about 10 people because our processes are all the same, and then I might just go on a limb and be like, all right, let me go grab some of this, and then we'll see from there. But there's so many different, uh, I guess you could say, influencers or channels to Instagram people, Twitter people. A lot of times, if you really pay attention to it, you're like, wow, that doesn't make sense. It's because they bought into something. And they're trying to sell it to make a profit so they can get out of it quicker. Mark my words on that there. Um, you could tell that, that going on a lot out there. And just, just watch what you're listening to what other people are saying out there. Take it in. Evaluate it yourself. Don't talk yourself into buying into them is what I'm really saying there. Do some background check on to them, especially if you don't see them dumping tons of money into it and they're only showing you two, three, four, five hundred dollars and stuff. If I I mean, if I saw somebody out there not named Gary V, Vegas Dave, or one of my close friends dumping ten thousand dollars into Giannis a year ago, I probably have been like, huh, that's kind of different, you know. And I might look into something like that, but somebody dumping in and spending five hundred dollars into them. And say this is going to be the next big thing. I probably would have been like, eh, that's not enough for me to be convinced on to it. You know, that's a small percentage of, you know, of, of somebody doing something like that out there. But like I said, be careful what you listen to out there and you hear from all these uh, different channels, influencers, or people at shows to card shops, whatever it may be. Because I, I can tell you from listening to a lot of people talk at shows, even. There's a lot of bad stuff being said to people out there. And what they're trying to do, and I've seen it, is they're trying to make money on their mistakes by having somebody else purchase in on the stuff. But my, just one of those things. I think that yep, that was my last one. That was number five. So those there have been the big mistakes that I've made over time. And I would go back as far as five years too recently on to this. And I have to always constantly remind myself, you know, to stay with my goals and what I want to do. And I might tweak them because I might have to try to get to something quicker. So 
or I'm falling short on the goal and I got to figure out how I can maneuver or is that goal not even achievable now because of the new market too. So hopefully uh, some of this stuff makes sense and you know, you can use it for yourselves if you want. Maybe, you know, some of it hits home, some of it doesn't. And, you know, you know, take whatever you want out of it if there's nothing at all. And if you do have stuff that you've learned over the years, please put it down in the comments section so other people can read it as well as myself and see maybe if they could, if that would help them in their goals and objectives with what they're doing in a hobby as well, too. Because we can only grow and learn by sharing information right now because there's stuff being tossed every which way out there. Again, everybody, thank you for watching the videos. I do appreciate the support. I am sorry that UPS is yet again, they don't deliver on weekends to me, um, is yet pushed out something again even later. So as soon as I get that stuff in, I promise that video will go up. Uh, other than that, everybody have a good weekend. You'll probably see some different videos like this until I can, because uh, what I had planned I can't do because of UPS right now. So see, plan on some different videos, something like this coming out to where it, it's different in the topics, and it's not like all pushed towards uh, scams and thievery that's going on out there and dishonest stuff that's going on as well, too. All right, everybody, have a good weekend. Take care. I will catch you all uh, hopefully live next week with a giveaway. Talk to you later.